I call the uh, Balfour Borough Council work session to order on May 1st. Uh, we have welcome everyone to the Borough Council work session. No council action uh, is taking place during the work, work session. Uh, Mr. Bernier is, uh, we're attempting to connect with him, so we're going to move forward with that if near the end of the meeting he has it, or maybe at the opening of our business meeting we could do that. But I'm going to change the items for discussion around somewhat just to accommodate our reconnection uh, with the uh, folks outside of our meeting. So I'd like to start with the Chantel uh, cable franchise. It's an overview of the cable TV laws and perspective agreement uh, that's in your packet. Uh, and I'm going to ask Mr. Stewart to sure. start this off, if you would, please. Sure. I put a memo in the packet. I'll just try to summarize it. Uh, cable companies have agreements with municipalities are called franchise agreements for use of the boroughs or the municipalities right of ways they put a physical cable TV line within the street right away and they they have an obligation to have an agreement with the municipality for doing that and, and uh, these these agreements have been around for decades uh, this is a new company. There's a new company called Chantel Cable. They're out of Shan Shenandoah, Virginia, in that area, but their abbreviated name is Chantel Cable. They have already obtained a, a couple franchise agreements in the center region. They, the center region folks said, you know, why don't you look at Belfont? So they got in touch with me and said, are you interested? So I, the reason I, I wanted to put some background information in front of you is the FCC laws, the Federal Communication Commission laws, govern these franchise agreements. So when, you know, the FCA call, contacted us and see if we're interested, but we cannot, we cannot really keep them out. We cannot have exclusive agreements with one company over another. So in essence, we've got to come to some kind of franchise agreement. Hey, can I put you on speaker? Oh, thank, thank you, thanks. So uh, th this is kind of like the introductory way of getting started. You know, they contact us and say we're interested. Uh, we, we have always used uh, special attorneys to do this type of work, at least Belfont. Uh, it, it's complicated, a specialized work. I did mention in my memo that the last time we did this fairly big was with the renewal of the Comcast agreement. And, and I, I keep looking over to Joanne because Joanne was on the consortium board. It was four years ago. Four years ago. I checked, ago. Ago. Okay. I checked the date this afternoon. All right, but you know, the board, uh, you know, I, I was there as my technical assistance. Similar to the MPO, they copied the whole format from the MPO. You know, we have a technical committee, which I was a part of. They have an elected official committee, which was the board. Anyway, make a long story short, that that's what was done for our Comcast renewal franchise so agreement. That that particular agreement was a joint agreement. We negotiated yes. with Comcast yes. and Windstream, which is the other one that's in the county, followed along and agreed to everything that was in there. So the agreement that we have, even we don't have Windstream here in Belfont, is the exact same one that we yes. have with Comcast. And in essence, that's what we would end up with, with with Chantel. You can't make them any more complicated, you know, more competitive, less competitive. They gotta be almost identical. Like if you offer company A a set of things, you gotta offer it to company B as well. What What is difficult is a new company coming in, putting in lines and having zero customers and somehow staying afloat financially through that uh, startup process, uh, that is why there's you usually get one company and that's it because the, a company here already has customers. A new company has zero customers. So, but here what's happening I think is I got a, it's weird, I got another email today from another company saying something similar about running fiber. Now it was for internet. But apparently there's infrastructure monies at the federal level 
to incentivize these companies to put in the lines. It's the infrastructure bill. It's the infrastructure bill. So, and that's kind of what this company said today. We have money, you know, we, we've got to lay, put in the wires and so forth. So we'll have a call sometime here with those guys, those people. But here, uh, now another twist, I guess because they have money, <laughs> they're willing to pay our solicitor, specialized solicitor, Cohen Law Group, which was used by the consortium. It's, I mean, this is what they do. I think if you go to the Burroughs Association conferences, they usually have a booth or a township association. They usually have a booth. It's all they do is cable agreement renewals for representing municipalities. So we would, we've already been in touch. There's a letter in the packet for the regular meeting. They would represent the borough, work out a draft agreement. Obviously, it's going to be similar to the Comcast agreement. We would talk about it, and then we would negotiate an executive session. Once that's finished, uh, completed, you know, we'd have a public review of it, you know, and, and maybe hopefully a timeline of when they'd actually install lines. But it, what I'm trying to describe in a brief way is this process that we're looking to undertake and that the laws that go with it really don't give us much wiggle room. You know, you have to have an agreement. It can't be exclusive. The maximum you can negotiate for is 5% of the cable bill. So I, I, does anybody have any questions? I had a whole series of questions based on my experience okay. with the consortium. Some of them you've partially answered. Okay. Um, how is this specifically related? I'll just go through them and then, yeah. and then you can figure out how to answer them. How, how is this related to the consortium agreement when we signed with Comcast and Windstream four years ago? By the way, we signed four years ago. We started negotiating two years before that, just FYI. I'll try to answer your questions. They're, they're only related because there are two franchise agreements. This outfit does not does not use consortiums. They don't go that. We no one's even asking us to use the consortium that was used prior with the Comcast agreement. This company is going municipality by municipality and working out agreements with each municipality individually. So, so that was my next question. So, this is, will be a go alone cable contract. Yes. Okay. With them paying the legal bill. Okay. Uh, as I understood when we signed that 10-year contract, mm -hmm. so they're four years into this now, mm -hmm. would, first, would this only be a six-year contract to match them up or would it be starting all over as if we did, there, didn't there, exist? There, there is a, there's an industry standard. I think it's 10 years. Yes. I think that's what we would be looking at. I don't think we'd go shorter than that. There's no, there's no reason to line them up perfectly okay I mean, there's no obligation for us to do that okay. um we're going to, so um they used to answer the question about them paying it. it my own my major concern about them paying our legal bills is that it then becomes we have less leverage you have total leverage because you're going to, this borough council is going to decide what you want in that agreement within the parameters of the FCC laws. Okay. Uh, and, fi and finally, we've got this agreement that goes for another six years with Comcast and essentially Windstream, which isn't here in the borough. Correct. Uh, and we have to make this contract similar so that it doesn't give them more advantages or even maybe going the other way, less advantages than the other one. What kind of negotiations are we doing other than saying, here's what we, you have to come up with? This, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. There's only a little bit of room. And we you know that, if you recall, we negotiated uh, connections of municipal buildings. We negotiated funds for CNET, for, mm -hmm. for uh, renewal of equipment. When equipment right, wears right. out, and, and the amount of money that comes back to CNET and to us, the yes. five percent. Yeah, well, five percent is a cap, and then I think yeah. 
you know, there might be like a quarter or there, remember there was a little quarter or something that went on the bill for yeah. something. Yeah. That's really the only wiggle room, negotiation room we have. So everything else would remain exactly the same. Mm -hmm. it very, it, you have to stay within the parameters, not only of what's already existing, but the FCC laws that are that much out I there. Understand, yeah. So it seems to me that we have to move forward with this. We don't have uh, we don't have a choice, obviously, from you, what you're you telling get, us. Yeah, yes. But then we so we need to get I guess get that started, and then that, then we need to see what's coming back at us. Yes. To continue moving yeah, we, this we, along. Yeah, we get a draft agreement. Uh, we probably introduce you to the the attorney that works with Cohen Law Group and get a draft agreement and then we'd have some conversations and, and back and forth with that consortium we had you as technical and we was originally gay and then it became me yeah. as the council member would we be doing the same thing this time we're going to meet an executive session with all of you it's just belfont borough in it we're going to meet an executive session and we're, we're going to negotiate the agreement in the executive session with with the solicitor present there's anything I need to do administratively, I'll do. But that would pri primarily be scheduling something in executive session. Uh, that, that's really the extent of it. Okay. Any other questions, Sharon? It answers mostly what I've done. It, it feels a little funny to me, but. It is funny. It, it's, 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 it's funny that they're providing that they're, us with all yes. the support. That no, that's not what the point is. It's knowing what was happening in the history in the past yeah. and trying to mesh this in so that we don't have any um, issues. You know, Amy uh, Farkas, Farkas from Harris going to Patton, they got an agreement with these folks. Very, just as I described, okay. they already got one. Okay. And I think uh, Ferguson or Patton. I think State College and Ferguson State College. are the only two at this point. Okay. Well, I, I know there, there's, a, Amy's the one that said, Go talk to Belfont, they might okay. be interested. Okay. So, uh, the people who were there for the consortium already accomplished agreements. So okay. That's a good, good sign. Okay. Uh, you want to move, move on? Do we have yeah, enough time? If, if, if we're going to try to squeeze it in. Okay. Okay. Um, All right. Which, which, one do do? Do? Hmm? which one do you want to do next? I'd like to do the A discusses okay. the far uh, people. Well, we, have, we have Nick online. Yep. He, he's our potential engineer <laughs> we would look at approving an agreement in the regular meeting but we, we've had conversations with PennDOT and, and uh, Nick Schaefer of Trans Associates and you know again we, we started out without tr with uh, trying not to waste taxpayers money by having a design done for Parkview and Bishop Street or Zion Road of a traffic light signal all the design work, and then have it undone because PennDOT says something major needs to change because Airport Road is going to have a light and because of the elementary school. Uh, you know, we, we had concerns, we still have concerns. I, I had conversations with PennDOT, you saw a copy of my email. Uh, they're saying, you know, just put the brakes on for now. We had conversations with Nick. Uh, Nick's done a lot of this work. That's really all they do. Uh, and his phase, his first phase, would be a data analysis. Uh, he lays out it in his proposal what he would do. It would get, and that would that work would be done in the summer of this year. And then he is potentially starting the design work the fall of this year. But he, we would, we would say not to start that unless. We have the, the information needed from the school district. Uh, the school district is working on a traffic impact study right now. They've not submitted it yet to PennDOT. So we want to get our, get our hands on that and see what it says. And of course, PennDOT wants to do the same thing and then figure in any issues that would be part of our design, design that in to get our permit. So we wouldn't waste any money. We wouldn't start the design until we have those answers. So I'm recommending at the end to go ahead and start this process and then make, make, make us uh, a, it's a better outcome even. Once you have the design, we would apply in December and January in that time frame for a grant through the, through the state. I don't know if it's actually PennDOT uh, 
that's called an Arley grant, that's an acronym. And the grant is 100% no match monies for construction of traffic signals. So we, we would be very wise to get our design, get our work done, get ready for that grant, submit everything that they say we have an excellent chance because the light is already warranted. You know, so we, we may go higher up on the list for grant funds because we need to put this light in. So uh, that, that would be a good time frame. We would find out, apply for funds, see if we get them. If we don't get them, we're still gonna move ahead, mm -hmm. but we would go out for bid, a bidding of the construction of the light in the spring of 24, and then have c construction, you know, pick a bidder, pick a low bidder, and then have construction shortly, sometime summer, early summer of 24 would be a tentative schedule. The, the grant folks love to see the shovel in the ground uh, well, plan. They, they, they like, to, they like yeah. to see, do we have any skin in the game? Yes. You know, we right. would have done a study already uh, to see if the light's warranted. <coughs> we did that. We paid for the design. Right. Uh, you know, it's an estimate here. We can go over it in a regular meeting. Um, you know, there's net a fair amount of money we're going to spend on the estimate that, that comes out of our funds. But we would be, yes, in a very good position for grant funds. I, I know I invited Nick. I don't know, Nick, if you have any comments or anything you want to add. Can't hear you, Nick. You're not, you're muted. He's muted. You're muted. There you yeah, go. Yeah, I'm getting it off. So there you go. Uh, Thanks for having me tonight. Uh, yeah, Ralph, you explained that all real well. Uh, I did have to talk to Jim today. Uh, we talked about the, the uh, logistics of the signal, you know, the timing of it all. And he was uh, reviewed. Excuse me. Prior to Jim's, Jim's a pen dot guy, right? Yeah, so Okay, no problem. Jim Roman yes. from uh, yeah. Pen Dot Two. Uh, well, first off, Jim knows that a signal is needed here. It's justified. And really, now that it's on the books, it should be installed expeditiously as soon as it could. Um, but, you know, we talked about how there's so many parts here with the school going in, the armory, is airport road need going to be signalized? Um, so, like Ralph said, some degree of confidence with the analysis needs to be known before uh, any design or construction could occur. Um, we also talked about uh, uh, one of the things we brought up in a meeting we had a couple months ago was making this a cluster signal with airport road if that was more to, to be a signal which we don't know yet they have not reviewed it so <clears throat> they're not they're not confident it will be a signal or they're not confident it won't be. Um, but a clustered intersection is two signals which operate on the same cabin and we talked about that and, and this location is not a good it's not an ideal situation for that for, for two reasons. One, they're far enough apart where you could just have them coordinate it. And the most important reason is because in between these signals or intersections, uh, there's going to be driveway points. And if you have a clustered intersection, those would need to be closed. And that's not anything we want to uh, we want to start looking at here. Because um, there's an HOP in between permitted driveway Right, I think there's like three residences there. Uh, so it would just be a coordinated system, and that makes things a lot easier um, in, in terms of the design. Um, but as Ralph mentioned, yeah, there's there's a couple things which definitely need to be known before any design will be taken, and that's the school traffic, if a signal is going to be warranted at the airport, and the armory traffic, uh, if that's actually going to move forward. I have one quick question, and the motion this evening, it says uh, we were going to accept the proposal at the condition that the de design phase is not started until the traffic impact of the planned elementary school is known. So what would we be voting just on accepting the, the uh, general overview and, and, and we're holding off on voting on the... Uh. I would prefer you vote on the whole thing with that condition, and I would, I would convey that condition 
in writing to trans associates because um, there's, a, there's a place we sign for the proposal okay. I would say yes we accept your proposal but don't start that phase until we have this other information okay. my concern with that type of motion is that we may be signing a contract we're required to pay for something and then find out later that we're not being charged correctly because the scope of the design has changed result as a result of what the school district is doing if anything it's going to go up not down <laughs> well I, I mean it could go in either direction well he, he very clearly says in the proposal the last page what he cut what the comp what the, what's covered the scope in in the proposal which is the data analysis the design <coughs> all that stuff but he said if they get into something very unusual like w the widening of the right-of-ways creates a whole nother realm of surveys he'll be back with a new proposal so all this is an, this is like what I call a standard proposal to get us to a traffic signal but if there's something major because of something PennDOT's making us do we'll he'll, he'll add more time and we'll have a new proposal but the scope is just a standard traffic light with you know data analysis looking at what's happening around the area and, and that's about it that's the extent I personally would prefer waiting a little bit, but if that's what we have to do, I guess that's what we have to do. Well, as I said, you're 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 not you're not you're you're just doing data collection now. The design would be in the fall. It would not start until we get the school district information, and we want to be in position mm -hmm. for the grant. I, I I think we would want to start soon, either way, but soon. And I, I know the community wants us to start this. So the sooner I think, the better. We, we'll have to go through the process regardless. Anyway, yeah, I understand that. It's just, it just to me, seems since we don't have, it's like some of the things we've talked about before. Sometimes we don't have enough to make a well-informed decision. And this feels like to me is we have most of the pieces, but not all the pieces. Do we really want to go ahead with Mm -hmm. partial information that's that's my concern one thing that I, I look at is living right there and if, if you said this ex excuse me but is there a study to look at a way to tie all of that area in together without displacing or hurting any of the residents that are there and I know I, no way. I, no I know way. I didn't know if somebody did well, a study or looked at a way to combine those there's, there's no way that, that can happen that right. we a couple months ago in one of the council meetings council very clearly said we you know we don't want to take any property right we don't exactly. want any disruption we, and if it means two traffic lights that's so not, I conveyed that to end on that that's the least disruptive uh, out of any possibilities out there uh, I think that would be the extent now they of course they got to see if the lights warranted at airport right Right. But uh, this way, there's no purchasing of right of ways, displacing of people, anything. Exactly. So, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Sure. Nick, do you have anything else you'd care to offer? No, I don't. Um, you know, I'm just, uh, just, just to say again that you know, no design of, of Parkview would occur unless, you know, we discuss the analysis results we cannot we are not moving forward with any design and I talked to Jim Roman about this. <clears throat> um, we'll reconvene with the meeting as we did uh, a couple months ago um, to discuss the analysis results and um, they may actually want to review the analysis as well just to uh, make sure everything is sure. uh, to their satisfaction um, <clears throat> and then we can uh, move forward with the design at that point. Okay. Thank you, Nick. Thanks, Thank Nick. You. Thank you very much. Any other That's questions good. from council? Kent, Shauna, any any questions? Input? Okay. No. Okay. Do you do you want to quickly do the last item? We're a little bit over time. We it'll probably take a couple minutes. I just want to show you a picture of what we're talking about. You can go thumbs up or thumbs down. <laughs> Whether okay. you at least like the aesthetics, how they work. Sure. Why are you getting that set up? How many of these are you thinking of? Where would they be placed? 
And what infrastructure do we have in place that will make this we're, feasible? We're not to that point yet. Okay. I, think I, I, I just want to show you, what, you some broad what, ideas. sort of what they look like and how they work. And then I think our next step would be that, Joanne. Okay. To, uh, yeah, to answer well, your, your question. <laughs> okay. That, that one that Don just showed, there's a little, is this a video, Don? I'm not sure. Or no, the video didn't it's open up home this afternoon. Yeah, push, push yeah. the play button down there. <laughs> <laughs> Well, could you mute? Could you mute yourself, please? We're trying. That. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, that video this afternoon when I tried I know, it, I, did, I tried could, it. it didn't work. So I just know. the picture was all I could all right, see. Okay, I tried. I tried it. It's just it hang on, shows on. two signs flashing and a guy walking across. Yeah, that's kind of. Yeah, it, this one. This one is in tall trees. It's a black pool. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, obviously the green signs, a flashing beacon is between the two green signs. That you know, that Joanne asked about, the, you know, how it's powered infrastructure it has a solar panel on top. It's solar powered. Uh, some we have literature that Matt Allman from Public Works provided. Some don't have the push button. Some have two separate put, put, uh, pedestals, and you walk through, and you know, the light that the light standard kicks on. This has a button you push. This does not have a floodlight. Some do. Uh, that goes out into the intersection a little bit. Onto the crosswalk. Onto the crosswalk. Now, and this is kind of like a traditional pole. Not all of them have that. You know, if the neighborhood wanted that, obviously, in our, maybe our downtown or historic district, that would be more fitting. It's still a big, t tall pole. It's, I'm going to guess, seven, eight feet tall or maybe nine feet, it's yeah. pretty tall. Yeah. But uh, that one, again, is in Toff Trees. They call it Presidential Drive in Toff Trees Avenue, or whatever that is. Uh, you, you know, I don't know if there's any other So there's, there's no crosswalk there? That makes there sense. is, there is, it's not as clear as ours, but okay. there is a crosswalk. Okay. Or it's, yeah, I think it's painted. So Do you just want to, uh, there, there, this is literature, so we'll just, uh, mm -hmm. page down through. You can see two there. The middle one's a black pole. The ones to the side are silverish, more uh, galvanized. I'm sorry, what were you saying, Bonnie? Is, uh, I assume there's studies on the effectiveness. At PennDOT, uh, we had, I asked PennDOT mm -hmm. about the lights in the pavement because we had heard they were high maintenance and she, he said they, they're still high maintenance or headaches. Mm -hmm. He said these are more effective. Now, that, okay. just in general speaking, that's what PennDOT, the PennDOT okay. represents, the same Jim Roman that we were talking about, said these are more effective and there are studies that have shown that. Okay. Um, the, so he sent me what they did in Lewistown and they then the said there's a couple around State College. Uh, they sent me like a permit application. But that, that, that picture there shows Kind of like what a floodlight might look like. Uh, I think the one has maybe the pedestal outside of. No, I'm not sure if that's what that is, but again, some some have the button right on the pole. Some not, sometimes there are separate pedestal that might have some kind of a signal, like you walk through, and it it's, turns the lights on. But these things would flash for a period of time and be all programmed. They would flash, say, say, 30 seconds or 40 seconds, whatever the programming is, and then they would turn off. Uh, so and you can page down a little bit on. We'll try to point out some things. I know the first time I drove up through Toff Trees. Okay. And that one that you had the picture yeah. of. It really caught my attention because oh. there was somebody waiting there to cross. Very mm -hmm. good. So nice. it was flashing. It's like, yeah, oh, right. there's, a, there's a crosswalk here. I need yeah. to yeah. pay attention. Now this picture is a little deceiving because it has the lights in the pavement. And, and, and you know, we're, we're not proposing that because they said the lights don't work, they're mm -hmm. headaches. But the whole everything else, the solar, the push button, that, that's kind of what, what was suggested. Mm -hmm. Now some of the diamond shaped signs have lights that go around them mm -hmm. in addition to the beacon. So there, there's a lot of variations. I'm glad everybody's sitting down because I can tell you how much they are <laughs> <laughs> per per pole or per unit. You know, depending on some of these little options, it's like seventy-five hundred to ninety-five hundred. 
per poll. So it, it would be, you know, probably a grant process mm -hmm. that we would look at through PennDOT, mm -hmm. kind of like the traffic light. Uh, so we, we could, and then there's a permit through PennDOT that's required. Again, uh, mm -hmm. Jim Roman sent me the one that Lewis Town had done. Mm -hmm. had, um, but uh, there's a process. Like council said, yes, this is what we want. You know, we look at budgeting, we look at funding, mm -hmm. you know, where, where's the grant, where's the money coming from? And there'd be a, a proposal for a permitting process. We were an engineer to do that. Mm -hmm. And then eventually you'd have installation. But, uh, you know, we, I, I wanted, to, you know, you, uh, mm -hmm. you brought it up, Mr. Johnson, yeah. a couple times. Yes. Uh, we went to PennDOT and PennDOT saying, this is what is being installed Currently, it's the thing for crosswalks that are lighted. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to get that in front of you. I didn't put any action items. I want to maybe think about it, give us some feedback. Mm -hmm. You know, if you want to pursue anything, we can list, talk about it, list an action item. Mm -hmm. okay. Any other questions? For... Sounds like none. So uh, we can. Uh, we can adjourn. Go home. <laughs> <laughs> hmm? Joanne, did you not see the video? like to call the uh, Belfont Borough uh, business meeting to order. Uh, welcome everyone to Borough Council. Oh, I'm on work session, sorry. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> so, where are my clothes? No, I don't know. Thank you. Thanks, Don. Uh, Pledge of Allegiance followed by a moment of silence. The Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Do have a roll call, please? Mr. Mr. Veneer. He's, He's here. here. Yes. Mr. Brackville. Here. Ms. Cleeton. Here. Ms. Stan. Here. Mr. Johnson. Yes, present. Ms. McKean is here. here. Yes. Ms. Purnell. Here. Ms. Sedgwick. Here. Ms. Tosti Vasey. I'm here. Mayor Johnson. Here. Okay. Uh, additions to the council meeting agenda. In accordance with Act 65, if a matter is not on the agenda, council cannot take official action on it uh, with some exceptions. The council can act on matters relating to potential or real emergencies. Council may add a matter of agency business to its agenda through a majority vote. The council should state the reason why the action item is being added to the agenda. Council may vote to add an action item or items to the agenda. Is there any items that Council wishes to add to the agenda this evening. <coughs> Hearing none, I'll go to public comment. The public comment period is for oral comments regarding any action items listed on this meeting agenda or any comments in general. No deliberations will be entered into by Council at this time. If you would please sign in. Come to the podium at the appropriate time. State your name, address, and which item you are speaking about. And please limit your comments to three minutes or less. Okay. Communications, Mr. Stewart. Oh, public comment? None? Okay, good. Okay, written communications. The first one is a thank you letter from the Belfont Area Middle School in regard to the police uh, situ situation or a response to the threat of an active shooter back in March. So, so again, a very, very nice thank you letter from mm -hmm. the school district. 
Next item is a complaint about the red meet the red spaces on North Spring Street in around the Moose. It's there for your consideration. I know there's been some discussions about the red area enforcement <coughs> uh, at, at this point. Uh, Sarah, if you want to take any action, or I know there's very yeah, so, I so I think while we, I'm not asking for any motions at this point, uh, have we been, have Morris Minds more, have we been gathering these complaints? And I thought a couple months ago we said that we were going to look at all the red parking spaces at the end of the summer. And I think if we start collecting these complaints at that time, then we can look at it and see what we can do to help improve the situation instead of fixing this spot, then that spot, and then the other spot. Yeah, uh, we're, we're putting them before you as we get them. So we, we have we have copies so, of them. So I think. But we don't want, we're not holding anything. You know, we just want you to be okay. aware of what we're seeing. So I think that might be the best route to go rather than doing any motion this evening. Okay. I, I do have a question as to, and I don't remember uh, how it, all those parking spots got to be red. Can you give us that? Well, they, they, they got to be red because the they right. had. That's where we had the long-term meters. They were the quarter meters where you put a quarter in and got four hours parking. So it sounds to me what you'd have to do is put the regular meters on to, to turn them back to a regular parking space. Yeah. yeah, yeah. If you wanted to, yeah, to expand the short-term meters up a block or so, you could do that. Another option too is to get the permits because you can get the permit to park, mm -hmm. which is quite honestly a less, lot less expensive than feeding the meter there. It, mm -hmm. it, it would be cheaper to get a permit than it would right. be for someone like if you were a member of the Moose, for example, it would be cheaper to get. Permit that it would uh, pay yeah. meter or yeah. anything. Yeah. 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 We, we could definitely put the meters in that area if that's what yeah. sure. direction that you want to go. Just I think the reason option. I think the reason we decided to go with the red painted lines then and do per permitting was because the meters themselves cumulatively were expensive, and this was a an inexpensive way to Absolutely. to handle yeah. this. Yeah, you couldn't justify buying a five hundred dollar meter for. 25 cents for the day to park yeah. there, 50 cents right. for the day. Mm -hmm. yeah. What's the daily fee if somebody just needs it for a day? It's yeah. like it's uh, $4 for one day, but uh, for $15 you have it for the month, and that's the price of pretty much one parking ticket. So it, my comment would be that the letter from the Moose, they have a parking lot there. Well, that wasn't from the moose. That was from somebody else. It's near the moose. I think she said uh, where. I think it was from. I thought it was someone going to the moose. Well, yeah. Yeah. I, frequently, well, they talk about a business. Are they talking okay. about the moose business? I think so. Because they I do have a lot of parking lot. Right. This this yeah. one says she she frequents the moose for meetings throughout the week. For meetings, mm -hmm. and and wondered why all the metered spaces went away on the east side of Spring Street. I counted them. There are seven spaces there. Well, and that's why I asked the question. So yeah. we know why, because they had the long-term meters there. Yeah. So I would suggest maybe we could throw something out to say that, you know, if you're if you're interested to get the monthly permit. It's, it's easy. Yeah, I mean, I'd like to just encourage people that have questions that you know don't understand the long-term parking or the red permitted areas to call into the borough we'll be more than happy to walk them through the process it's you know once you set it up one time that's all you have to do and then you don't do anything else I, I do have a question that I don't understand after the enforcement hours of 8 p.m. are the red spaces open to anyone mm -hmm. in other words if I go I'm, I'm using the moose as an example I don't have a permit for a red space it's after 8 p.m. Enforcement is gone. Am I free to park in those spaces? It depends. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a question that was proposed. The reason I say that is we have this alternate street parking. Oh, oh, those alternate street signs. <laughs> I get that. That's but the only exception. If, if I'm not in violation of the alternate street parking, then you're okay. So after 8 p.m., <laughs> yeah. all parking is not enforced at either the meters or the red spaces or the kiosks. 
or the kiosk. Or the kiosk. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the reality of it is, is when there when it, there isn't an enforcement officer, there's not likely to be yeah. a ticket. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that's right. So, uh, uh, to answer this, that the published hours are at eight, 8 a.m. until eight p.m. Yes, and that's also on Saturday. Well, uh, so Saturday, Saturday is from Saturday. nine to twelve is yeah. the enforcement. Yeah. Right, but after twelve noon. I think it's. I think you're okay after 12. Mm -hmm. you, you'd be okay. I would say it would always be that way unless it became a problem in the residential area for the yeah. people that are for paying for the permit. I mean, mm -hmm. if it became a problem, it would need to be addressed. But well, we talked about this in a work session. This is supposed to come up in the borough or to the borough so that we can discuss these these times of parking. Yes. And that's supposed to come up in June, as I understand it. Yes. So yeah. We're up, we'll, we'll, we'll have all the information for you by then. Okay. Sorry to delay that. No, and I, I just want to reiterate what, what Don said. It's it's an education thing. If you have questions, uh, reach out to the borough. I know uh, we've been inundated with with calls and complaints, and um, you know there is a, a level of understanding there. Uh, once people understand what it is, then they're like, oh, it, it makes sense. So it's just kind of getting to that point. So thank you. Mm -hmm. Move on here. There's a, there is a letter about a safety issue on the intersection of South Penn and East Bishop Street. I believe most of that, other than painting of the yellow curve, just because of the weather, has been addressed. Sure. There is a, a construction size dumpster nearby that was blocking visibility. I believe that's been addressed as well. Okay. Yeah. When did they address it? Because it, it's sitting in the same place where I took the picture. Of. When did you take the picture? Saturday. Why? Well, according to Matt Allman this morning, he said it was addressed. I don't know if they backed it up or moved it. Because it, then it becomes away. these two vehicles down here at the bottom of the street at the stop sign okay. that creates the other issue. Well, I know there's a, we didn't paint any yellow curbing yet, and usually that's where that means no parking, and that's just because of the rain we've had. But we anticipate, you know, as soon as the weather breaks, putting the yellow paint on the curb. Okay, because that's, that's what I told you earlier that it was, looks like new concrete there, but they yes. didn't do anything. They did it out on the yeah. Bishop Street side, but not on this side. Yep. But if that happens, then these vehicles could end up now still fighting with this thing uh, over here because they'd have to come up here. Yeah, the dumpster is a short-term thing. I, I, yeah, I know. The whole thing's short-term, yeah. but we don't... Yeah, we're, we're trying to address it as best we can. Okay, I, I agree. I, I'm okay with that. I okay. want to make sure somebody's working at it. Yes. You, know, you said Matt was looking at it. And yes. Yeah. So that's, yeah. that's good. Thanks, Ralph. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, Central PA Native Plant Festival, May 6th, the information's in your packet, uh, materials, uh, nighttime visibility safety webinar, May 18th, 3 to 4.30 p.m. If you're interested, we can see if there's a recording available. Uh, oftentimes there is, and we can send that out to everybody. You? Uh, yeah, I usually attend those, and I will just request a recording, and then I'll have it. Thank you very much, Deborah. I have the backup recordings for a lot of these. Oh, thank you, thank you. All right, so uh, there's a county broadband, uh, cable broadband update. You know, there's some parts of the county that uh, lacks broadband service, so there's just an update there. There's a website to go to at the county to, for that update. Uh, the Center County Library and Historical Museum sent a very nice thank you letter about the boroughs, uh, after they receive the boroughs contribution uh, to the library uh, that we do annually. There's a, a two pieces of information regarding birds. Uh, one is about dim the lights for birds at night, and the other one is how to stop birds from hitting your windows. There's some methods available. Uh, Could those two be put on our website so the public yes. can see them? Yes, we can do that. We'll take care of that. 12 gauge works. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, there, we, we receive uh, the update, construction updates about the wall project that's being overseen by PennDOT. Of course, PennDOT has a contractor on site. Uh, we, you know, the, the update is in your information. The best I can say is there's no delays mentioned. Uh, looks like they're making very good progress. 
uh, we're very optimistic it may not take till August but that, that's just our view at this point or our thoughts at this point but it looks it looks pretty yes <laughs> looks, looks pretty good and our general observation yeah. is it's moving on yes yes <laughs> pretty good mm -hmm. uh, EMS reminder you know at Belfont EMS is having a seminar uh, May 31st 6 30 9 30 p.m. in Better Township at the Better Township building I saw Scott Rhodes messages that today and he said he wanted to know for coming. It's on my calendar. Okay, good. Yeah, if you want to RSVP either directly or let me know, we'll do it on I'm your behalf. Let me know. <laughs> okay, let me make a note here. Yeah, I think I'll try to make that All right. date. I'll put your name in. Thanks. Uh, the next item is Energy Biz Series. Uh, the, ch the Chamber of Center County gave us this information. There's a several webinar or, or seminar series. Uh, one's May 4th. There's another one, I think, in June. June 5th. What? June 5th. June, June 5th, yes. Uh, we can also post this as well. Uh, there's some just uh, some incentives and, and information for either nonprofits or businesses regarding energy savings of, you know, opportunities, I guess. I believe that's all we have for written communications this evening. Okay. Moving on to the consent consent agenda. I'm. Uh, you see it listed as the council meeting minutes. Yeah, I make the motion to approve the minutes of April 17, 2023. Thank you, Randy. Is there a second to that? I'll, I'll second. Thank you, Joanne. You're welcome. Um, roll call, please. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Any any corrections or additions before we. Uh, Roll call, please. Uh, Mr. Bernier? Yes. Uh, Mr. Brackville? Yes. Ms. Cleeton? Yes. Ms. Dan? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Ms. McKean? Yes. Uh, Ms. Purnell? Yes. Ms. Sedgwick? Yes. Ms. Tosti Basie? Yep. Thank you, Dawn. Next item reports. Uh, Mr. Mayor? I have two proclamations to read tonight. <laughs> I believe we have uh, U.S. Postal Service employee, Mr. Townsend. All right. Can you come forward? You're going to have to stand in front of the mic for CNET. <laughs> hey, right there, buddy. Right You're there. good, buddy. Right here. Come on over. Yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> Proclamation. Letter carries... Carriers stamp out hunger food drive day. Whereas every year on the second Saturday in May, letter carriers across the country collect non-perishable foods as part of the nation's largest one day food drive, distributing the donations to local food banks. And whereas the letter carriers stamp out hunger food drive is just one example of how letter carriers work to make a difference in the lives of those they serve. Since the pilot drive was held 1991, more than 1.82 billion pounds of food have been collected. And whereas we recognize all letter carriers for their hard work and their commitment to their communities, all of the food collected in our community stays in our community and we support carriers' efforts to help those in need in our community. And whereas we also recognize the noteworthy milestone of 31 years that the National Letter Carriers Food Drive celebrates in 2023. Now, therefore, I, Buddy Johnson, Mayor of the Borough of Belfont, Pennsylvania, do hereby proclaim this 13th day of May, 2023, as Letter Carriers Food Drive Day in Belfont Borough Center County. And I recognize the citizens of our community to support the food drive by placing non-perishable food items in or near your mailbox on food drive day. Your letter carriers will pick it up and delivering the mail and together, we can all help to feed our hungry. Adopted this first day of May, 2023. Great. Absolutely. Thank you. Absolutely. Do you have anything Thank you. to say? Thank you. Would you like to say anything about the? Yeah. Do you have any comments about? It? 
I put on the spot now. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's okay. Uh, thank you very much for your support. Um, as everyone knows, uh, food insecurity is, continues to be a problem, especially after uh, the last couple of years that we've had. Um, we weren't able to collect because of the pandemic, and now it's nice to be able to start that up. Again. Great. Thank, 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 thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you very, very much. much. And I believe Carrie Tolton. We have a proclamation for Center Gives. Whereas Center Gives was established in 2012 as a 36 hour online giving event designed to bring attention to our local network of nonprofits, provide a platform for them to raise money, and impart fundraising best practices. And whereas since 2012, the event has invested over $14,600,000 into our local nonprofit network, providing much need operational support to missions of many kinds, art, animals, education, environment, and health and social services. And whereas Center Gives began with 74 local nonprofits, 200 organizations will be participating in the 12th year and whereas our community has embraced Center Gives, making over 100,000 gifts during the combined, combined 396 total hours of this online event. And whereas we invite all community members to visit centergives.org beginning at 8 a.m. on Wednesday, May 10th, 2023, to donate one of your, to one of, of your favorite nonprofits. Now, therefore, be it resolved, I, Buddy Johnson, Mayor of the Borough of Belfont, Pennsylvania, do hereby proclaim May 10th through 11th, 2023, as Center Gives Day in Center County. Encourage all citizens to give back to the community in any way that is personally meaningful. Adopted this first day of May, 2023. Thank Great. You very much. But I would like all of you to visit Center Gives on May 10th and 11th. And May 11th, we are having our Center Gives Fest right here in Tallyrand Park nice. um, from 5.30 to 9 p.m. to count down our totals and do activities with the nonprofits. Very nice. to visit. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. You. Anything else, Mayor? Good. Thank you. Okay. We'll move on to Historic Architectural Review Board. Gina, anything? I don't have anything if you guys don't have any questions. So. Any questions for Gina? Good. Thank you, Gina. Oh, just one quickie. I noticed that we have a vacancy coming up. On the, oh, yes. We do have a vacancy. It's in your memo. Um, there's a vacancy for the zoning hearing board coming up. I actually did receive um, a volunteer application this week, coincidentally, for that vacancy. So I'll be sending that out to the zoning hearing board to get their input on that and then letting you guys um, have that information as soon as I can. Great. So so we may have a, 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 we may be able to fill that vacancy sooner than we thought so okay all right thank you thank you Gina mm -hmm. moving on to item 9 current and old business the first item is uh, by thread block party on Bishop Street uh, I need I'm looking for a motion and a second to approve bagging of the meters at 227 through 234 that's eight spaces on Saturday July 22nd from 8 a.m. until 5 p.m. for food vendors. I'll make that motion, Brackwell. Randy? I'll second. Thank you, Chuck. Anna? Discussion? Yeah. Yes, um, I looked at her letter this afternoon. I don't think she's asking for food vendors on July 22nd. As I read it, she's only asking for the meters to be bagged that day to give her customers free parking to help celebrate her business's first five years. She said that the block party with the vendors, musicians, and yard games will be postponed until the fall. So I don't think it includes the, the food vendors. Okay. I, I'm not positive on that, <clears throat> uh, but I, I know she wants the spaces all blocked off, bagged, 
originally she wanted the entire road blocked off. Mm -hmm. uh, this is what she has come back with. I thought there would be some vendors there, that but maybe would, not. That's not what I understood okay. from her letter. All right, well, I, I can't say it's any different than that, but I, the, the, the request is to use those spaces for the day. But I are uh, so the motion was with food vendors. We're not. Uh, she didn't ask for food vendors, so I don't think that that should be part of the motion personally. This this is by a thread we're talking. Yeah, about. I know. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so I'm I'm reading the note, Joanne. Okay. Uh, it says, I'm starting to plan our five year celebration, and I want to host a block party complete with pop up vendors. But then there's a subsequent letter saying, well, all I want is the parking spaces. She doesn't say anything about vendors in that part of the okay. letter. That's where, I'm, that's where I'm coming from. She, she does say that I thought she was just going to put everything in those spaces, but I'm not, I don't know the details. Why don't we find out? <laughs> well, the same meters are being used no matter whether it's her, her people coming in to shop or if it's the food yeah, vendors. Yeah, if food vendors don't show up, then they park there. I don't see the big deal. Yeah. I, I don't have a problem with the meters, the, the parking meters at all. It's just a question about the vendors. Yeah, I, I, you know, if possible, you could add it in that way. And then if it turns out they're not food vendors, no harm, you know. Okay. Yeah. I think that was a thing where this came out before they sent that letter. Because uh, I saw it. Uh, are we ready to vote? Roll call, please. Uh, Mr. Bernier. Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Mr. Brockville. Yes. Uh, Ms. Cleeton. Yes. Ms. Dan. Yes. Mr. Johnson. Yes. Uh, Ms. McKean. I saw your lips move, so. Ms. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Purnell. Yes. Uh, Ms. Sedgwick. Yes. Uh, Ms. Tosti Basie. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> Next item Belfont Borough, Center County Boroughs Association approved heading to full resolution and policy committee uh, of uh, PSAB. There's no action needed by council. The next item is Easter Seals Walk With Me event June 10th in the Talleyrand Park. I'm looking for a motion and a second to approve the proposed route within the Talleyrand Park and to allow free parking in the west lot and surrounding meters on July 10th 8 a.m. until 12 p.m. June, June, June 10th. Thank you, Joanne. Um, so I'm looking for I'll make that a motion. motion for one or both of those. We can take them individually or we can take them together. Let's move along since we're late. Put them together. <laughs> okay. So do I have a motion? Joanne. Made the motion. Oh, I'm sorry, Joanne. I didn't hear you. Yeah. That was there a second. I'll second it. Thank you, Kent. Any discussion? Yeah, I don't have any issue with the route of the free parking. However, Easter Seals is located in State College. It's not a Belfont nonprofit and therefore doesn't qualify for a waiver of the registration administration, administrative and damage fees. At the last meeting, we did suspend borough fees for services, but these fees were, were I assume, are still going to be as we've always handled. So I think Easter Seals needs to know that. Um. And yeah. then if that needs to be a separate motion, fine. But I don't. We're not waiving their fees at this point with this this motion. Well, I think Easter Seals is like a um, broad. Doesn't necessarily have to be in Belfont, does it? It's a That's, nonprofit. Uh, uh, I thought the, we agreed. We, we well, said nonprofits well, based in Belfont, correct? Mm -hmm. So if they're outside, they they are charged. Right. Yeah. Well, so the new policy was going to be any nonprofit, but so that was suggested. Well. I, just Easter. Easter Seals is a nonprofit organization, right. so I, I have I have no problem waiving myself. I have no problem waiving the fee, but that's me. So I, I think we need to. We still haven't fixed this issue right. that we've had. Right. So there's no sense creating other issues. But I would say we keep it as we have been doing, where you know the, the Belfont folks who are non, you know, they can they can some of those can be waived but outside the town. Some of it could be waived, but not all of it could be waived, depending on what it is, I think, at that point. Were there some that we did waive, Joanne? Not, not that I know of. It's been consistent than anything that is located I, I think yeah. we need to stay with the consistency that we have. 
Yeah. And I think until we get everything, we need to go back to what our original was, and so they would be charged for this until we get everything straightened out with the new ordinance mm -hmm. and all. Is there an application done? Yeah. Okay. I think it's in the package. package. Yeah, yeah, it's in the package. I saw it somewhere. Sure. Any other discussion? Roll call vote, please. Uh, Mr. Bernier. Yes. Mr. Brackville. Yes. Ms. Cleeton. Yes. Ms. Dan. Yes. Mr. Johnson. Yes. Uh, Ms. McKean. Yes. Uh, Ms. Purnell. Yes. Ms. Sedgwick. Yes. Ms. Tosti Basie. Yes. Item 10, new business. Parkview and Zion Road traffic light design proposal. I'm looking for a motion and a second to accept the proposal with the condition that the design phase is not started until the traffic impact of the planned elementary school along Airport Road is known and figured in. I'll make that motion. Thank you, Deb. I'll I'll second. Say. Go ahead, Mark. Mark, thank you for the second. Discussion. Any discussion? Doug, Doug, Doug Johnson, what was it that you said earlier in the meeting that we were going to have to do it anyway relative uh, to the light of parking? What, what, what did that mean? I, I was, I just this, this part of the installation of the light would have to be done at some point anyhow. And, and this gets us prepared to go to the next step. We'll have this expense regardless of what we do at, at any time time is that yeah. accurate yes. <clears throat> yes. so that that's what that comment was about there in my opinion Kent there's no reason to delay this because this gets us going forward no matter what happens we still have to do this and it sets us up for applying for grants that could help fund the traffic light it's sort of like when the when when the, the grantee sees that we are ready to put shovels in the ground, it sort of it doesn't guarantee us the grant gets funded, but it looks pretty good. Other comments? Roll call vote, Mr. Alderman. Mr. Bernier? Yes. Mr. Brackbill? Yes. Ms. Cleeton? Yes. Ms. Dan? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Ms. McKean? Yes. Ms. Purnell? Yes. Ms. Sedgwick? Yes. And Ms. Costi Basin? Yes. Moving well, on. Is that a unanimous or? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Next item John Nass's construction um, application and certificate for payment for Governor's Park baseball field project. I'd like a motion in the second to remit payment to John Nass's construction for the Governor's Park baseball field. So moved. Practical. Randy, yes. Bra uh, motion. Second. Second, Barber. Yeah. Discussion? Roll call vote. Mr. Holderman. Uh, Mr. Bernier. Yes. Mr. Brackbill. Yes. Ms. Cleeton. Yes. Ms. Dan. Yes. Mr. Johnson. Yes. Ms. McKean. Yes. Ms. Purnell. Yes. Ms. Sedgwick. Yes. Ms. Tosti Basie. Yep. Next item Cornhole Tournament at, mil at the Mill. I'm looking for a motion to approve the closure of Dunlap Street on June 3rd, 2023 from 10 a.m. until 5 p.m. I'll make that motion for now. Thank you, Rita. A second it, Cleeton. Thank you, Deb. Discussion? Yeah, a couple questions. Go ahead. Is this both sides of Dunlap, the Waters, the High Street and up the other street? Because they did mention in the let, in the thing that they're using not only what's in front of the Gamble Mill, but uh, the waterfront development project that is still no, green space. It's just the just by okay. the, in front of the mill. Okay. So the rest of my question uh, about the other end is moot. And said, so do they? And the question is, will they need fire police so people can safely cross from the parking lot? Because they there's they, already a crosswalk there. Right, but this is a higher amount of traffic, which is why I'm asking. Well, if you could put a road guard there, that probably would suffice. You know, if you have a volunteer from your organization. I think you need somebody, I think you need more of a fire police. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. you just can't yeah. put, they got to be trained oh, to okay. traffic. Yes. I mean, uh, I don't know how many people you're expecting, but there is a formal crosswalk there, but. And know, there is a pedestrian sign there. Yeah, yes, pedestrian right. sign. Uh, 
Uh, this is the first uh, annual it, it's going for a scholarship for the high school um, so I can't tell you how many people will be there I would say it would be no more than an extremely busy night at the Campbell Mill I, would think it's not I, I don't I don't foresee it being hundreds and hundreds of people yeah. I think it's going to be especially for the first year uh, an event to try and raise some money for a scholarship for the yeah. high school does that answer questions? Yeah, I, I, I'm just thinking of safety because we we're, we're talking about minors here, or and, yeah. and rather than in the evening with adults. That's the only reason yeah. I'm suggesting fire police. Right, and I, I believe it is aimed at adults. Um, yeah. This is it's part of the mills uh, participating. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. More yeah, it's not. It's not a kids' <laughs> cornhole tournament. It's a uh, Belmont alumni, and it extends to anybody who wants oh, to okay. uh, feel like cornhole and sign up for the cornhole tournament. And uh, <laughs> what is a cornhole a tournament? What yeah. is a cornhole tournament? Yeah. Twenty-five yeah. bucks, you can sign up and find out. <laughs> <laughs> Deb said she'd be your partner. <laughs> I heard. <it. laughs> I heard. We'll talk later. Uh, I'll show you. Roll call vote, Mr. Holderman. <laughs> Mr. Bernier. Yes. Mr. Brackbill. Yes. Ms. Clayton. Yes. Ms. Dan. Yes. Mr. Johnson. Yes. Ms. McKean. Yes. Ms. Purnell. Yes. Ms. Sedgwick. Yes. Ms. Tosti Basie. Yes. Great. Next item B I A C C Annual Croquet Tournament. Looking for a motion and a second to approve the annual croquet tournament request. To use the extended area of Talleyrand Park on June 25th, 2023, with a rain date of July 9th, 2023. So moved. Thank you, Joanne. Second. Second. Thank you, Barbara. Damn. I don't have this in front of me. I, I know they said the hours, but I is it's not on the motion. Yeah. 12 to 7 is the event hour. 12 to 7? Uh, set up from 10 to 8. Okay. 8 to 10 to 8. Any questions? Roll call vote. Mr. Holderman. Mr. Bernier. Yes. Mr. Brackbill. Yes. Ms. Clayton. Yes. Ms. Dan. Yes. Mr. Johnson. Yes. Ms. McKean. Yes. Ms. Purnell. Yes. Ms. Sedgwick. Yes. Ms. Tosti Basie. Yes. Great. Okay, now we're going to do, uh, or I'm asking for a motion to allow the staff to review, approve, and select the lowest responsible bid, responsible bid. So the bid opening is for the Armory Building Project Accessibility Elevator and Sprinkler System. I'll make that motion. Thank Brett, you, Bill. Randy. I'll second. Thanks, Barb. Sure. We're going to open them here in the meeting. Yep. So um, do we do the vote now and then open them? Yeah, we can do the vote. Okay, first. thank you. Go ahead. Uh, Mr. Bernier. Yes. Mr. Brackbill? Yes. Ms. Clayton? Yes. Ms. Dan? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Ms. McKean? Yes. Ms. Purnell? Yes. Ms. Sedgwick? Yes. Ms. Tosti Basie? Yes, sir. Thank you. Go <laughs> ahead. Okay, there's uh, three different uh, bids for this. The first is the, <clears throat> this is for the elevator installation, so it would be the general and mechanical construction. We have <clears throat> three bids thank you the first one is TMG builders <coughs> base bid five hundred ninety nine thousand dollars even yes Who was that again? TMG Builders. Okay. Uh, the next one is JC Orr, that's O R R and Son Incorporated. Uh, the base bid $459,750.
And the third bid is Berenice Building and Remodeling. Five hundred forty-five thousand one hundred dollars. How's that first bid going? Five ninety-nine even. So the next bid is for the electrical construction, and the first bidder is Strauss Electric. What did you say? Curious. What does it electrical construction include? Well, it's mostly all, all the electrical for the elevator. Oh, okay. So it's not, the elevator was the first one, and this is the electric? The elevator the shaft. shaft. Oh, uh, elevator. Under bidding laws, after you get over a threshold of money, I think it's $10,000, but I'm not positive that, you have to bid out separately certain things, mechanicals, okay. electricals, and okay. the test project qualifies. Okay. Thank you. So uh, the electrical first bid is, uh, one hundred forty three thousand two hundred and forty five dollars. And uh, the second electrical bid is with from PBCI Allen Mechanical and Electrical. And their bid is one hundred and seventy-five thousand five hundred. All right, and then the uh, the last uh, three bids uh, are for the fire suppression system. So the first bidder is Triangle Fire Protection Incorporated. Went through the water. Okay. All right. I'm expecting you to go through the water. <laughs> Base bid uh, $324,880. Next bid is uh, SA uh, SA Communal. One hundred ninety seven thousand seven hundred and fifty. And this last one, they didn't mark it, but since I was there when the guy dropped it off, it's from Moore. $385,000. Uh, let me get make sure that uh, we got Moore Fire Protection Incorporated. Okay, so I'm looking for a motion to allow, or, um, we already did that. Oh yeah, okay, so uh, any discussion on those? So is we, are we on the, the fire suppression seems like it's off between, the, you know, the one, the one company and then based on the other two higher fees, I'm just wondering what. That, that's the idea, having the architect review everything, make sure it's Something's apples. Something's not missing. <laughs> well, make sure that's the case, that apples and apples. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Any other comments, questions? Roll call vote. Mr. Holderman. Uh, we already voted. Okay. Oh, yeah. did we? Okay, sorry. <laughs> I'm not with it. That's okay. Okay. Um, Outdoor Adventure Expo request to hang a banner on the Veterans Bridge. The Center Gives banner will be hung until the late evening on May 11th or the morning of May 12th. Looking for a motion to allow the Outdoor Adventure Expo Expo banner to be hung May 12th through May 21st. Before we make the motion, what's the start date? 
Um, the start date of hanging the banner. Oh, okay. Okay. It's either May Thank 11th you. or May 12th. It says May 11th or May 12th. Okay. Yes. I'll make that motion. Okay. Uh, I'll second it. Please. Thank you, Deb. Joanne made the motion. Questions on the motion? Roll call vote, Mr. Holmgren. Mr. Bernier. Yes. Mr. Brackbill. Yes. Ms. Cleeton. Yes. Ms. Dan. Yes. Mr. Johnson. Yes. Ms. McKean. Yes. Ms. Purnell. Yes. Ms. Sedgwick. Yes. Ms. Tosti Basie. So moved. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. Thanks. Next item, Chantel Cable Franchise. Consider approval of engagement letter to have the Cohen Law Group assist the borough in the completion of a franchise agreement with Chantel Cable. Looking for a motion and a second to approve the engagement as stated. I'll make that motion. Thank you, Barbara. I'll second. second. Go ahead, Joe. Johanna. Second. Discussion. Roll call vote, Mr. Alderman. Mr. Bernier. Yes. Ms. Mr. Brackbill. Yes. Ms. Cleeton. Yes. Ms. Dan. Yes. Mr. Johnson. Yes. Ms. McKean. Uh, yes. Ms. Purnell. Yes. Ms. Sedgwick. Yes. Ms. Tosti Basie. Yes. Great. Thank you. Item 11, council member comments for the good of the order. Um, Randy, I can start with you if you don't mind. Uh, uh, no, I, I just want to thank uh, Kent for let me set it a space tonight. I, I found all the upcoming trivia questions, so I'll be ready <laughs> the next time. <laughs> He's clear on at you. <laughs> Anything else, uh, Johanna? Um, just to go back to the proclamation from the mayor about Center Gives. It's a really easy way to support your local nonprofits. Donation amount starts at $10. So you can make, you know, this one $10 donation or kind of stack those up as you go, picking your favorites. Um, and a lot of Belfont local organizations are on there and your center county organizations are on there. So it's a nice two-day event. And hopefully I'll be home in time to go down and check it out at the park, too. Yeah, nice. Great. Thank you. Barbara? I have nothing tonight. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Stewart. I was really looking forward to a trivia question. Tonight. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we ran out of time in the work session. I don't know. Yeah. Kent has one. So uh, maybe. maybe you'll have one in closing for us. Yes. Maybe you'll have one in closing. Okay, Mr. I have nothing. Mr. Alderman. Uh, I just wanted to mention that today a few of us attended an event down at Big Spring Spirits. Uh, it's kind of like a kickoff for. Uh, the band shell they did a very nice job on the kickoff uh, uh, and it was kind of a celebration for the million dollar grant that they received from uh, DCED it was very nice nice event well well attended yeah okay. I agree <laughs> mayor um, I'm excited for the community cookout which will be on Wednesday May 24th from 11 to 2 uh, corner of Allegheny and high streets uh, sponsored by giant so make sure you check that out in a couple of weeks. Have Coming a couple well done hot dogs. Hot me. dogs, <laughs> chips, drinks uh, on uh, on us on Giant. So great. Looking forward to it. Thank you, Mayor. I'm on your list, right? Yes, <laughs> as a volunteer. Good. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. Um, May 13th, the second Saturday of May is the Spring Migration Celebration for World Bird Migration Day. There's actually two of them. The first one is for the spring migration. The fall migration celebration day is the second Saturday in October, which is October 14th this year. There are many organizations and agencies that sponsor this educational outreach, including Environment for the Americas, the U.S. Forest Service, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Services, the Bureau of Land Management, the National Park Service, the Audubon Society and the U.S. Department of uh, uh, Defense. For, for 2023, the focus of World Migratory Bird Day is the importance of water for migratory birds. This is the poster that uh, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service shared with me last Thursday. Unfortunately, it was a little bit too big to put into the package. <laughs> so I wanted everybody to see it. Um, this annual global celebration 
campaign celebrates bird migration <laughs> across countries and continents. The message for last year was dim your lights for night at, at night for birds, which is what was in your packet earlier this evening. Mm -hmm. And this year's message is water sustains bird life. Uh, their recommendations on what actions can, you can take to manage your water resources and protect a healthy e aquatic ecosystem include don't let the water run, actions like shutting off the faucet while brushing your teeth and taking shorter sho showers helps with this idea. Second is try to plant a native garden. This reduces the need for watering your land while at the same time providing food for migratory birds. Keep, third one was keep your water clean and don't litter. And finally, get involved locally so that you can help protect wetland, wetlands and other critical habitats for birds and people. Clearwater Conservancy, Trout Unlimited, the Talleyrand Park Committee, and Edible Garden at Talleyrand are all local groups that you can volunteer with to help with our community. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, Joanne. Uh, well, since it is May 13th, could this be posted on our window like we do some of the other things sure. and then and then I can get it yeah. back later? Sure. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Deb? I have no idea how to follow that. <laughs> <laughs> Every, everything is sunshine and lollipops. <laughs> 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 uh, or do you have any comments? I said everything is just sunshine and lollipops. <laughs> <laughs> Rita. I just have two questions. One is a follow-up. Um, I'm going to be a pest about the train <coughs> situation. No. No new information. Okay. Is there any anything the public can do? Like, is there anybody they can contact to see if they can uh, find out information about that? Or uh, the tracks are owned by Cedar Cog Joint Rail Authority. You could check with them. <coughs> I was just wondering if there was more people that <coughs> called in to ask them the question whether maybe they might make some sort of a statement rather maybe, than just maybe I think it's a security issue. Like, yeah. I mean, obviously, bad, some people plot to do bad things, and they don't want it, want people to know what's on those trains. <coughs> but if there's nothing bad on the train, they should be able to tell us that too. You would think. I mean. I'm just telling you what they told me. Yeah, I, no, I understand. I, I understand TSA, what you're saying. TSA. <laughs> okay. I mean, they used to just do a lot of the line collection work and pulling cars out to that area. Yeah, but I don't I, know what we else can make else. assumptions. You know, we know where the end of the track is. Right. We can see what's going by, but I can't say for 100%. No, no. Still, I'm just saying that's the norm. That's there. Second question is about the um, school um, crossing flashing lights. Do you know what time they're supposed to be on? I think we t I talked to you about this personally before, but I noticed when I go to work, I pass there around 7.30. The crossing guard at Belfont Elementary is already out and on duty, and the light at the top of the hill at Curtin Street is not on yet. And it doesn't, I don't think, kick on maybe till maybe like 7.35 or something like that? I, we could check the timers. All of that's permitted by PennDOT. Mm -hmm. the, you know, the, the timing and all that, and of course with daylight savings, that may change a little bit. Mm -hmm. But it's permitted by PennDOT. We, we can dig a little deeper. I did have them checked out. They're working uh, properly, mm -hmm. but you're saying the timing is off. Yeah, so and, and I don't. I meant to check to see what time okay. he's officially on duty, but okay. I know he's always there at 7:30 when I go through. Okay. But the lights aren't flashing yet, okay. so it, it nice. might be whenever we got a permit, we put in a time for when it starts and when it stops, and somehow you know maybe the person work came in later. I, I'm just saying they're not in sequence, obviously. Um, and I can find out what time he's he officially works there and get that information to you. If well, that why don't you do that? And we'll see what time the permit says and what time the thing actually kicks on. Okay. Um, and, and I to know add to that, I'm sorry, but okay. I do traffic duty in the morning, mm -hmm. and I've been stopped a couple times. So the one on Bishop Street in the AM, they reported it was not on in the morning. So I don't know what time it comes on. I know it's on after school when I leave. Prior to school, I don't personally drive through. It's, 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 there not, it's not always on. Well, sometimes when I go, it's like 7 a.m. and you know, buses are starting to pull in. Okay. And there's a crossing guard up there too, right? For mm -hmm. down at the the theater end, I believe, of the building. Yes, 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 there is. So I could check on what time that yeah, person it comes in too. So check, mm -hmm. and okay. I can help you too. We can work together okay. on that. But I, right. it's been reported that 
those lights on that end aren't on either. So mm -hmm. we, we can we, look into that. We can do some checking. Sure. Yes. Okay. Thank that was all for me then. All right. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, Rena. Mr. Uh, uh, Joanne, uh, Shauna, <laughs> I'm going to say Mr. Bernier for last. <laughs> Yeah, that's too um, I have nothing. <laughs> okay, thank you. Mr. Bernier. Well, I'm checking for you all relative states in our United States. Who could tell me what Wyoming's nickname is? Wyoming. The Buckaroo State. No. Uh, <laughs> uh, hmm. Wyoming. Something about open land. Or the capital. Can you tell me what the capital of Wyoming is? Cheyenne. That's right. Cheyenne is the capital of Wyoming, or the, the Cowboy State. Okay. In 1869, Wyoming was the first state to let women vote. Mm -hmm. And in 18, in 1872, Yellowstone Park became the first national park. There you go. You're all now smarter about Wyoming. <laughs> <laughs> We're happy for that. Well, is there any other comments you have for us tonight? <laughs> <laughs> we'll all get a copy. Anything else for the good of the council? I'll ask for a motion to adjourn. So no, that we'll all get a copy of Kent's yes. book about the 50s. He will, he'll, he'll get us all a copy of that. Okay. Uh, that was Dan and Sedgwick. Uh, uh, we're, we're adjourned. I gave it to you. <laughs>